This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm taking a look at the immortal Zugzwang game by Aaron Nimzovich here. This game was nuts. He's playing uh, Friedrich Samich is playing with the white pieces. Aaron Nimzovich is playing with the black pieces, and this was in Copenhagen, uh, 1923. So Nimzovich, you know, he's pretty well known. He's written a couple of uh, pretty popular chess books. I guess uh, My System. You know, people have probably heard of that. And so here he's playing flexible move order, knight f6 and e6. And Samish, back in the day, you know, early, early 20th century, uh, this guy was no slouch. I think he had a, a system named after him, uh, maybe a few. Uh, definitely one in the King's Indian defense with f3, notably. So let's see, knight f3 here, flexible move order, b6. We're looking at the Queen's Indian defense. And g3. So this was... Uh, G3 makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're going to see some tension on this diagonal, so White wants to uh, fight that as well. So Bishop E7, a lot of times you might see a check variation these days with Bishop B4 check. And going back to E7, just trying to misplace this Bishop here. Um, anyway, Bishop E7, no problem. And so castles and castles. So now it's time for Black to make some decisions. Is he going to play D6? Is he going to play C5? Or is he going to play D5? And uh, he can even play a5. You know, I, I think knight e4 is even a move. He's got a lot of options. Most direct is d5. You know, go ahead and uh, put some put some pawns on the center. You know, go ahead and put a body on it, as they say, and uh, go ahead and, and try to increase the control of, of this critical e4 square. So bl white, you know, Samish plays knight e5, and this certainly makes a lot of sense as well. You know, go ahead, go ahead and get in there. Get, stick the knight in there on that on that square, and also now we're seeing some tension on this diagonal. The pawn is actually pinned. Can't take c4 now. It's going to run into that. So knight e5 is good. Good pressure. And c6, trying to break that pressure, reinforce the square. And uh, here white plays just takes. And I think he could have played uh, e4. I, I think is uh, is okay. You know, it looks a little overwhelming for black, but I, I think uh, black's doing just fine here. Uh, it's roughly equal. So anyway, he plays takes, and uh, now bishop f4. So bishop f4, maybe th this is okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with this move. It's It, it seems like white has uh, declared some intentions. Bishop f4 is going to be looking, maybe trying to play on the queen side. And so now with rook c1, I think this is where white started kind of going a little wrong here. I, I think uh, this this was a little bit more routine, mechanical opening play. And I think he had to be a little bit more on his toes here. And, you know, maybe you, you don't want to play a4 because this is going to give up the b4 square. And that's, uh, you know, you can't take pawn moves back. So you don't really want to play knight a4, you know, trying to immediately hop in because knight a4, you're moving away from the center and black can probably come in and with knight e4. So I think, you know, maybe the plan here for white, maybe queen b3 immediately, rook e1, rook d1. F3 and E4. This this makes the most sense to me. Play for E4, and, and I feel like good things are just gonna happen. You know, put the rooks in the center, that's okay. Instead with rook C1, now B5. And uh, now it's kind of like uh, whoops, you know, because now B B5, B4 is kind of seeming inevitable at this point. You know, and B4 is gonna give some some good control over the E4 square. So I think here. Uh, White still probably had another chance to try to redeem himself with knight d3. It may look like a weird move, but, you know, these a6 and b5, this is weak in the dark square complex on the queen side. So maybe knight b3, and uh, I don't know. Maybe now you could try with, with a3, and, and you just you don't want to let black gain too much space. Instead, White played queen b3, and so I, I think, you know, this looks good on paper, but I, I think when you put it in the field, queen b3 is going to be a little superficial at the end of things here. I think queen b3, yes, it makes sense uh, as far as, I mean, yes, this is good. You know, this, this is nice, putting a little pressure there. But it, it doesn't actually do anything because, you know, as, as Nimzovich, his next move, knight c6, and this was an excellent move, very attentive. Normally you see moves like knight fd7 or knight you know bd7, Stuff like that, you might be trying to maneuver a knight to c4. That would look great. You know, but with knight c6, this was much better. And, and at first, you know, I was, I was looking at this, and I was like, all oh, these guys, you know, back in the 1920s, right, probably, you know, drink a little too much during the Prohibition. But, you know, it, it actually was a really good move. I mean, it, it just makes sense. You know, first of all, 
You knight c6 after he takes. If he doesn't take, you're threatening to go to a5 with tempo and then come to b4, or, or c4, rather. Uh, knight c6, you're also putting pressure on, uh, on the d4 pawn. So, I, I mean, knight c6, just more active. But, you know, why I was skeptical at first, you know, because this rook is, is already here. You know, it's, it's already ready to jam on the bishop, and uh, this, this could create some problems for black. But then I look a little deeper, and there's really no way that white can capitalize on this. You know, there's, there's no discovered attack. I mean, 94, I thought at first. You know, what about 94? This, this would be cool, right? You know, a little spectacular. Maybe you're, you're trying to hit the dark squares. C5, that's a hole. But it looks like um, after D takes, black is just up a pawn. And while white does gain some impressive looking activity, it seems like uh, maybe not so easy. And I think black with this extra pawn, you got to be a little careful. You don't want to, you don't want to fall into something like this. But you know, even queen b4, let's say. And I, I think black is uh, black's up a pawn. You know, you can't, can't argue with results, right? Bishop d6 doesn't work. Uh, just maybe bishop d6, rook to d8. Okay, I think enough said. Black's up a pawn. So, uh, okay, so the bishop can be here. That, that's, that's proven. And it's actually doing quite a good thing there. You know, so I, I think here, uh, again, maybe it's time for white to admit, you know, it's, it's time to regroup, move the rook again to d1. That's admit he was wrong there, move the rook to d1, and play for f3 and e4. How else? I, I just don't understand how else why he's going to create counterplay here. Uh, you, you just, I, I just don't see any other plans. Instead, Mr. Samish played h3, and this is uh, very confusing. I, I don't know why this, this is a weird move. And so now queen d7, this is not a weird move at all. Queen d7 is setting up b4, and now the knight is not going to be able to swing to a4, you know, where, where it's going to be able to take advantage of those dark squares. Much worse. You let the knight, you know, come to c5. You're starting to make black, white look good. You're making him look like he has a good plan here with this bishop and, and coming towards the queen side. So you don't want to do that. So queen d7, uh, quite simply not not allowing that knight to a4. And so knight h5. This was a nice move. You know, black is uh, he, he's developed kind of a, a really good position, and it, it's it, it's been very subtle how this happened. Nimzovich, very um, you know prophylaxis here. With this queen d7 and the knight c6 was almost a bit of prophylaxis as well because it forced this position. Um, you know, notwithstanding h3 and king king h2, those were pretty bad moves. It didn't really do anything. But now Nemzovich, you know, when I started looking at this a little bit more, I, I started realizing that, uh, I mean, wow, white is busted. White has no plan here, and that's why he played h3 and king h2. Um, you know, he, he's unable to play this e4 central break. Just doesn't work, and a lot of times in these positions where the bishop's on f4 in this fianchetto structure, in response to knight h5, a lot of times you can leave the bishop there, and it's not a big deal. You know, let's say you play rook e1 because the these pawns, you know, while it looks a little goofy, the pawns are fine, you know, because they're preventing e5 and it's exerting more pressure on the center. But the problem is with the king on h2, couldn't be farther from the truth. This just doesn't work. I mean, this this is just helping black, you know, more than anybody else here. So, okay, so that's why can't leave the bishop there. He goes back to d2, and now f5. So excellent play by Nemzovich. You know, this is also a bit of prophylaxis here, you know, preventing uh, g4 and definitely preventing e4, which, you know, that's a big plus. So queen d1. So here white is, uh, this is not a good sign. You know, when, when, you're, when you're starting to admit you're wrong and you're retreating, you know, it's not good. So queen d1, maybe he's threatening some, some little sneaky stuff here with e4. And so first, Nemzovich prevents this with b4. So why not? You know, it's, it's a good time to kick the knight. And bishop b5. So let's go ahead and kick the knight, gain a little space, activate this bishop. And so now e4 just tactically would fail. Makes no sense. You know, why would you just give up the exchange? So instead, he tries rook g1. So Samish may be uh, trying to set up some pressure on the g-file in the future, as well as he's actually threatening e4 now. And so Nimzovich, this, this is a very, very instructive example here. He doesn't do anything with the knight. You know, I mean, he could have gone back with the knight. You know, that, and this is, you know, Blackstone's a great position. But the problem here 
is that this is going to allow White to exchange some pieces. And when you're in a worse position, and, and almost always when you're defending, it's going to help to exchange pieces. It's going to, it's going to uh, reduce some of the, the just attacking power of your opponent. Bishop g5 to knight e4, something like this. And, and all of a sudden, um, now you do have to watch the pawn here, but you know, in, in the future, White is going to be able to play uh, knight d2. And maybe he's even going to get the knight to this dream c5 square. You know, either way, this is really going to help out white. So instead of knight f6, which would have allowed some exchanges, Nimzovich just plays bishop d6. And he just improves his position. Now we can see this bishop, you know, still protecting the pawn. Now we're lining up directly at, black, at, at white's king here. And we got this other bishop who's definitely controlling some important squares. So Samage, he takes the bait. You know, and what else is he going to do? I mean, the guy, he can't move the, the bishop. Playing a3 at any moment in this game, just answered by a5, and it's clearly more beneficial for black to open up that rook on, on the a5. So that's kind of a moot point. So e4, I don't know, I can't really blame him. The rest of the game has just been going so bad that, you know, okay, he bites. He takes the piece, but black immediately gets two pawns for this piece, one of which, nice, nice pass pawns here in the center. Um, and, you know, now he's got the active rook. Also, this pins down White's bishop here, and the knight in b1 is, is pretty much trapped. You know, if he ever moves, that rook is just going to gobble up these uh, b and a pawns, and okay. So now, uh, queen g5 and rook f8, and this is perfect coordination. You know, the black's queen position could be improved a little bit, but um, every other piece, you know, again, I mean, look at the pressure. Just think about how many squares Black's pieces, they, they just just rake in the board. So he tries King H1, makes sense, you know, get out of that pressure. Rook F5, kicks the queen. Bishop D3, putting a little bit more pressure here, just in case. And, um, you know, also with Bishop D3, he, you know, if Rook E2 immediately trying to trap the queen, the queen can run. The, the queen can get away. So, um, you know, it can run here and, and whatever. So bishop d3, the idea is, you know, really threatening rook e2. So forces rook e1. And now Nimzovich, the move of the game, just h6. Beautiful move. I mean, very, very cool. You know, it, it just, this is absolute Zook's wing. White cannot move. He, he has no constructive moves to make. If he moves this bishop, he's going to lose the knight. Okay. Can't do that. A3, A5, these are completely irrelevant moves. Again, they change nothing. Uh, the knight is still not going anywhere. And um, playing B3 is certainly not very constructive. It's actually creating a hole, and it does nothing as well. So white has no constructive moves. If he plays G4, this is a nice constructive move, but rook 5, F3, and uh, he can't take would lead to mate. So yikes, that's no, no dice, no dice at all. So here, Samish actually just resigned. He resigned with honor, it's respectable. He realized he can move nothing. And uh, even though he's helped a piece for two pawns, he had to resign because the, the idea is that, you know, eventually, let's say how many stupid moves white can make, right? King h4, black is just gonna go here, let's say b3, okay, a3. And, you know, eventually white is going to run out of moves. He can't move his rook, still loses the queen. Can't move the bishop, you still lose the knight. So it's, it's perfect zook swing because, you know, in this age form, it was weakening as well. But if, if he moves the king, you lose the queen. <laughs> this, this is the idea. You lose the queen. And uh, not to mention, you know, black's queen could be, you know, doing something as well. So... So Samus just resigned because eventually, you know, Black's just going to move his king back and forth here. And eventually he's going to have to play, he's going to have to move his king. And when he does, he's going to lose the queen and also, you know, still a decisive attack. Black's, Black's queen is, is going to do something as well. So what a, what a cool game. You know, Aaron Nimzovich just, you know, combined, it, it was kind of like, he, he was making natural, very flexible, developing moves, very flexible, attacking moves. But at the same time, you know, he wasn't just barging ahead with his head down. You know, he was paying very close attention to what his opponent could do. What's his opponent's plan here? And how Black 
while Black could be, you know, achieving his own goals, preventing the development and, and preventing White from from enacting his own plan. You know, so it, it, prophylaxis is a really beautiful game. I mean, this is fantastic stuff. Very deep stuff. Not not playing simple, routine, developing moves, but you know, always going for the most active continuation while limiting the possibilities of your opponent. So very impressive display of prophylaxis by Nimzovich. This is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net.